City Historic Gallery, and I'm here in the Allegheny City Room in the Carnegie Library on the north side on Federal Street, and I'm here to speak with Terry Mowry today about um, something interesting, something that boys like for sure, and uh, that's toys. Are you on the north side? No, I'm not. Actually, I'm from Lancaster County on the other end of the state. Okay, Lancaster County. Yeah. Okay, that's Amish country still, right? That is. Okay. So, moving this lever is what makes the characters yeah. move. And then when all the balls go through that are in the system, it goes into this one, so then you just flip it over and it starts all over again. In 1978, I came to Pittsburgh. Okay. Moving my family out here simply for job opportunities. Oh, okay. And I worked for a, a company that made steel oil equipment okay. in downtown Pittsburgh. And after a while, we eventually moved our offices over to the north side. This was the first bus that got me started on this project. Okay, now where'd you find it? About 25 years ago in an antique shop in northeastern PA. I found it on the shelf and I noticed it says Pittsburgh. And I thought, wow, I didn't know they made toys in Pittsburgh. So I thought I have to buy this toy because I was already interested in the north side history. Right. So what are these toys worth about now, today? Well, some of them are quite common, like toys like this are probably ten dollars okay. on eBay. Something like this is going to be two, three hundred dollars. Oh wow, that's nice. In 1914, they were building the Panama Canal. Okay. You put marbles in this top trough. One marble at a time falls into this bucket. The weight of the bucket goes down to the bottom. At the bottom, you can see this lever dumps out the marble into this area. Incredible. This counterweight brings it back up. This isn't quite lined up, but this would have been a switch that left one more marble into this bucket. Wow. And it would just keep going up and down like a pile driving machine. <laughs> uh, Tell me about this one here. Benjamin Bain was the fellow that founded the company, and a lot of his early toys were basically industrial and mechanical devices that he would have found around the Pittsburgh area. And this operates with marbles. Put marbles in the top. Okay. One marble, this triggers a little switch. This is basically just a uh, second generation crayon. I used to play with toys like this when I was a kid. There was a girder and panel building set. I would have played like with this, these things for hours. I moved to the North Hills where it was still rural, which was what I was used to when I grew up. I commuted down to the north side every day. All his game boards were made out of tin. Oh, so this is an early game board, yeah. like, like a monopoly this, or? This is the spinner that told you where to move to. It started over here. This was after the English Channel competition started getting popular in the news. This one I brought along because this is basically the concept that got this company started. Okay. In 1909, he had a customer who wanted a tool and die set to make a sand-operated toy. Okay. So Benjamin Bain and his factory made the tool and die set to press out all these things out of sheet metal. When the time came to pay the bill, the fellow was bankrupt. So what happened was, to settle the bankruptcy, Benjamin Bain accepted all the rights to the toys, all the machine tools that he had made, and started making a toy called the Sandy End. This is about fourth generation, so it's a little bit more complicated than the original ones. There's a man who wasn't a friend of the North Side. A lot of people talk about the North Side of the Bay. This gentleman found the best of the North <laughs> So being a history buff, I just fell in love with the area and the, and the history of it. I feel like a native, but I'm not really. This is an incredible collection. Can we uh, have you come down to the gallery once we have it open and possibly do a presentation with the toys as well? Oh, sure. A little display on it. That's, that's the most fun part of these collections. To just put them away in a box somewhere and not really enjoy them doesn't do anybody any good. So I like to get them out into the public and, and talk about them. And plus, it's such, such, a, sad it's such a fascinating story. You can pick up his book in the gallery. You can see his toys live. And you heard that here first. He will be at the historic gallery to do a breakdown of his toys. Bring your kids, bring your boys. This is going to be incredible. Thank you very much, Mr. Mallory. Thank you. Bill. Appreciate it.